What's going on guys, Brian's here. Today is Monday, August 1st, 2022, and the market is closed. Just wanna share a few thoughts as well as present some information to you guys. So what we're looking at is the SPY, and this is the Advanced Gex page on Quant Trading App, also known as the Advanced Gamma Exposure page. This is showing us a report that's generated based on every single expiration in the SPY and every single strike price that has some sort of gamma exposure, and then it's presenting the information in this table right here, as well as a graph in the bottom that we'll get to in a few minutes. Now, I want to point out some key levels. If you don't know anything about gamma exposure, don't necessarily worry about that. It's more so about the levels right here. I've done other videos on gamma exposure and I will be doing plenty more as well as some basic and introductory levels to kind of expose this type of information to some newer traders. But as we scroll up, the first thing to take away right now is the market is currently in a positive gamma state. So if we were to scroll down, this little knob right here, this little button is just letting us know that this is what's referred to as the gamma flip or the zero gex level. This level is just saying if the market was to drop below this uh, area right here, below this area, the gamma exposure, the net gex will actually turn negative. And then as long as we remain above this level, the net gex is going to be positive. If you don't know anything about gex, just think of it this way. If this number is positive, then volatility is likely to be reduced. And if this number turns uh, negative, then volatility is likely to be increased. That's just because of the dynamics behind what market makers, also known as the dealers, what they're doing when they're delta hedging, their positions based on their gamma exposure. So as we scroll down, uh, think of it also this way as uh, as I as for the rest of this video, think of this uh, largely as support and resistance as that might make it a little bit easier for you guys. The last traded price of the SPY was 41083 when this page was uh, generated. And as we can see right here, this is the closest strike price. So that's why this is highlighted as yellow. Think of each, as, each of these levels that are protruding out as uh, likely to be very strong resistance levels. But I wanna point something out to you guys. What we have right here is the 410 strike. And the 410, the reason this green button is right here is just letting us know that this is the strike price with the highest positive gamma across all expirations combined. More importantly, it's also the strike price that has the most amount of of call open interest and then collectively this is the strike price combines that has a decent amount of total open interest as we combine both the calls and puts however as i scroll up you guys can see that things tend to taper off as we get past 420. Now we do see that there's a decent amount of gamma exposure here and then the 425 level it pokes out a little bit but nothing in comparison to the 420 level right here Next high uh, gamma exposure strike price makes sense is the 430 level all the way up here. But then you guys can see that the open interest is nowhere near as high as it is right here. More importantly, if I were to scroll down, you guys can see that there's a little bit of a heat map. So the levels that are dark blue and then uh, this color blue and then the really light blue, it's just highlighting the levels that have the highest amount of uh, total open interest. So if I actually were to sort this table, you guys can see that the highest open interest strike price right now is the 370 across all expirations and that's really because it's so dominated by uh, puts however if the market was to pull back to 370 it would actually have to drop almost 10 percent so 9.94 percent to be uh, exact if we were to sort this back by the actual strike prices as i pointed that out to you guys you guys can see now if we scroll down there isn't really much open interest as there's nothing really highlighted blue past this strike price of 420 right here because if there was something that's highlighted blue it means it would be in the top 10 uh high open interest strike prices because so this is the highest two then this is the next highest four and then the next highest four so combined these are the top 10 highest strike prices on the market right now and we can see that most of them are dominated by a negative gamma exposure that makes sense now there's also generally always more uh, open interest in puts than there are in calls it's just kind of the way market participants are huge institutions huge funds they will generally be long equity as well as buying puts because puts are seen as insurance so people are more interested in buying buying uh, protection or buying puts on their long-term portfolios however there is a little bit of a skew between these two numbers whenever one side gets really more dominant than the other and that's referred to as the put call ratio, but that's not necessarily the subject matter of this video. So as I move right along, let's just sort this back again by the uh, strike prices and let's go to the current spot price right here. So one way to interpret this information is if the market was to close below 410 or this 409 level, we can see that there really isn't much support in the market until we get down to this 400 level. Price will be likely to stick around this 405 level for a little bit just because there's a decent amount of gamma exposure here to allow price to kind of digest the move to see if we're either going 
going to bounce back up to this level or if we were going to continue to sell off to 400. Another important thing to take note of is this little knob right here is just letting us know this is the absolute gamma strike. So this is the strike price that has the most amount of gamma exposure in the market collectively across all expirations all strike prices right now so this is a very significant level to keep in mind the absolute gamma strike is going to perceive as a level that's going to have a lot of liquidity we wouldn't expect the price of the spy to just slice right through the level if it did come down to this level it's likely to chop around it for a bit as the dealers will be hedging their positions and it might take a few days or so to kind of consolidate to decide which way things are going to continue if it's going to reverse or if it's going to continue to sell off now implied volatility will be likely a big factor in what will happen if we got down to the 400 level pretty much if we get down to 400 and then you see implied volatility something like the vix increasing you can use that as a gauge as we're likely to continue selling off however if we did get down to this 400 level and the vix was not continuing to rise we can actually see this level as a massive repellent to the market as vanna and charm will actually start influencing the spot price of the spy and we can expect some sort of reversal but as we take a look at this again if some of this is going over your head don't worry about it just take it just think of it this way we have strong support at these levels right here this whole area is likely to be very choppy as the market is trying to figure out which way it's going to go below this level we don't have much support so we can sell off especially if we were to close below 408 it would not be a surprise if we actually just gap down to 405 if the market struggled at 405 we would likely just slice straight down to 400 maybe chop around here for an hour or two at 403 again it depends on the catalyst it depends depends on sentiments, it depends on other little factors. I'm just highlighting things and pointing out the uh, way to decipher the gamma exposure levels. So I would I would put some levels on your chart right now if you're not a Quant Trading App member. The Quant Trading App members, we actually have tools and we can kind of pull this up when our, uh, on our own as well as we have a Thinkorswim script that actually plots some of these levels on our charts for the uh, weekly levels. Now let's move right along and actually take a look at the same report, but this time it's generating based on just the August expiration. So if I wanted to include, say for example, something like November, I would just press this and maybe the uh, December monthlies and I would just press submit and that way it would generate a completely new report but we want to focus on just August because it's August 1st it's a fresh month right here and let's take a look to see what type of information this looks like so you guys can notice first and foremost there's actually no blue as I continue to scroll all of the blue for August is all the way down here so that's pretty alarming if you're looking to be bullish or you're expecting the market to continue rallying now it doesn't mean we won't rally but I wouldn't expect the uh, gains to hold unless we started seeing more open interest opening up up here that's just generally the way rallies are sustained because with each passing year the options market actually starts to play a major role on the equities market because there's more and more uh, participants trading options these days than there were three years ago four years ago five years ago six years ago and again the dynamics between what the market makers have to do when you buy or sell your calls or your puts the same way uh, institutions and hedge funds as they're buying and selling their uh, calls and puts the market makers are on the opposite end of their trade so all of the all of those things that are happening behind the scenes are going to be affecting the stock price now i'm highlighting 420 so let's take a look at the chart and what i have are two uh, gray boxes on the chart these are sometimes referred to as shadow boxes by some traders or other traders call it the uh, measured move so i just took the last big rally that we had in the market i put a rectangle over those prices so starting from the low and starting and and where it ended at the high before we pulled back and then i just duplicated the exact same rectangle over this area here because this was our last uh major low all the way up until the uh right here so these boxes are exactly the same in width and height so if we take a look at this from a width perspective we can see that this is a representation of time and if we were to think of this as when will the markets you know rally stop in terms of a time frame if you use the measured move concept we're likely to start m meeting some sort of resistance right here because the same amount of time has passed by for the last uh, rally now if we take a look at this also we can see that there was a massive amount of consolidation that took place back in may and it made sense the uh, cpi numbers came out right here and actually shocked a lot of market participants as the numbers came in a lot higher than expected and the market dropped over 10 11 percent i believe right here now what we just experienced over the past couple of weeks was an over a 10 percent rally from this low to to where we actually just closed that here but we are back in this area so one way to think of this is a lot of the participants that bought stock back in this uh, time frame right here they actually had to hold their positions in the red down over 10 percent and now we're back at where they initially entered their positions so they have a couple decisions to make 
either they close the trades out now and just take a uh, break even so which could be considered a win if you held the position down minus a 10 percent and now you have a chance to close it out for a zero percent loss for some traders i mean if you're anything like me and you've held the position down and it comes back to your break even spot if you've been down for for a while this is all the way back in may we're now in august 1st you're generally going to want to close the position again different time frames if you're investing for the next five to ten years then it might not necessarily matter for you because you're just expecting this to be some sort of a short term pullback and you're thinking the market's going all the way up to you know 550 600 maybe even 700 or so depending on your time frame but for short term traders this might be seen as a place to close out the position so this is going to create some sort of supply or some sort of downward pressure on the market in this area now at the top of this uh, shadow box or the top of this measured move we have this level right here which is a 4 uh, 17 and the 420 level is right here this gray level on my chart is a 200 day moving average so this is also a key level to uh, keep in mind that's likely to continue to start dropping down to get to at least the 430 level and possibly if we continue in the downtrend that the market's been in this level is likely to then drop down to about 420 so it would make sense that there aren't necessarily a lot of participants right now that are expecting the markets to go past 420 especially for uh, the month of august after we just had this massive rally during in July. However, again, it doesn't mean that the market won't necessarily go higher. It just is not likely to be a sustained rally, meaning the pullback will be very harsh or there won't be a lot of support on the pullback. Later on in this video, I'll show you guys different ways, you know, you can take trades using spreads with this type of information. But as we move right along, I wanted you guys to have some sort of context in terms of the chart and what the market is looking like uh, currently. Right here, we have the 400 level. So the 400 level, obviously, it's a very whole psychological level. It's a, It's been an important level in play from since uh, this year. We can see how many times price has spent around this level and how it's interacted with it every time it's touched the uh, 400 level. If we were to take a look and the 50% uh, retracement from the most recent swing low, which would be right there all the way up to this uh, swing high, we can see there's a little bit of confluence in this area right here. This would just mean it's the 50% pullback from the uh, last rally and the market tends to move in waves. So a halfway back is sometimes referred to as a 50% retracement is a little bit of significance because there's likely to be some sort of buyers on that uh, retracement level right there. Just like there's likely to be sellers whenever a stock price puts in a 50% retracement from the high. So in other words, if we take a look at this, you know, sell off here, when it bounced back up, this was about a 50% retracement as it sold off. It came down to here and it bounced back. This was around a 50% retracement, sold off. It bounced. This was about a 50% retracement. So I'm not going to draw out every single one, but just wanted to bring you guys, bring that to your attention in case you guys were not aware of that so you see here's our uh high market sells all the way off and we bounce we came back to 50 percent retracement before we sold off again and so forth you guys can do that on your own just use any type of tool that has the 50 percent retracement on your fibonacci and then just you know plot that out you're generally looking for a major swing low to a swing high there's a swing low swing high here's a swing low swing high this retracement was not a 50 percent pullback it actually stopped at the 50-day moving average before it pushed uh continued higher as the uh, trend was pretty strong over the past couple weeks now, as we jump back to the Gamma Exposure page and we're looking at it for the month of August, we can see the same type of information here. The 410 level likely to hold as some sort of support. However, if the market closes below 410 on any given day, we can make the assumption we're probably going to go a little bit lower if it fails to reclaim this level. It's very significant because it won the 411 strike. And again, you think of the zero gex level or the gamma flip level as an area. So think of it as anywhere between 410 to 412 as, as it's likely to change every passing day as open interest and things uh, um, change. But if you think of it as an area, you can see it right here on the chart. There really isn't much positive gamma below the strikes. And then we have the confluence right here with for the month of august as this uh, report was generated again this is likely to change because as the spot price changes the gamma exposure will change so that's why it's important to check this type of information you know a couple times a day pre-market after hours in the middle of the day during the lunchtime if you're aggregating multiple uh, strike prices or multiple expirations you generally want to check this a couple times a day if you're day trading then you only need to check the expiration which you're interested in which is uh, this one right here so we have the uh, absolute gamma strike is 410 for this uh, friday Friday's expiration right here. So if you're, you know, checking an individual expiration, then you, you don't need to check. You, you would be checking this a little bit more frequently because as the stock price is changing uh, every every few points or so, a lot of this is going to change. But for the most part, if you're aggregating multiple expirations together, then you don't need to be checking this every single you know minute as you would maybe the other page or any other tool in which you use to calculate gamma exposure. 
I start with the top down approach. So over the weekend, just be aware of the key levels right here as I'm structuring out my trades for the week. I'm not expecting the markets to necessarily hold over 415. So I've already started building out certain trades. Aware of 410 being such a key level right here, if we were to take a look at uh, this trade in which I posted uh, last week, this was the 410 call calendar for the SPY. So just expecting the markets to be a little bit choppy in that vicinity. If we were to check the how the spread is doing right now, it's actually up 11%. So I'm in a few of these and I have a myriad of other spreads running right now on the SPX as well as the SPY, but I'm just essentially looking for a little bit of consolidation around this uh, price level. So if it ends up being choppy around this level all the way until Friday from a percentual basis, that's about a 30% return. I'm looking for about a 25, 30% return. Once I'm up about 25%, and um, probably 20 to 25 percent, I actually start scaling out and taking some profit as I continue to hold. You don't want to hold something like this till expiration because obviously the market it can make any type of big move on any given day. And the, the closer and closer you hold it to expiration, the more sensitive it starts becoming to gamma. And that's not necessarily something you want in a non directional spread, such as a calendar like this one. If we jump back now to the uh, gamma exposure, however, I am fully aware that if we did get below this level, I definitely want to be in some spreads that are going to benefit from if we pull back to the 400 level. So I started opening up other spreads. I'm not going to highlight everything in which I've uh, opened as this video is not an intention behind, you know, my, my trades or what spreads I've opened, but just to show you guys certain trades in which I started opening up right now, here's a 4,000 uh, put calendar that expires at the end of the month, uh, high, uh, low risk, high reward. In terms of why I'm expecting a pullback, uh, it's understanding that the there's not much open interest past the 420 level. So I would expect if we did get over 420 and we didn't see the open interest start increasing for this month, that's a good little tip, by the way, if you didn't know. So in, in terms of this being the highest uh, call open interest level, if we don't see open interest start increasing past this level, that's that's an easy tell. If we think of it this way, people are not that interested in the market past 420 for the month of August. So if people aren't that interested in it past 420, then why is it going to stay above 420? So in other words, if we got over 420 and I don't see much open interest uh, past that level, as we can see, there's no blue right here being highlighted relative to as I um. I scroll down here, you guys can see that there's a lot more blue. And again, it does not mean that we're going to just drop this month. So it's just a risk reward as what trading is. It's just what's the uh, reward of continuing to hold positions long up here relative to what I would expect if we did pull back. And then what is the information and what is the data showing us? As we scroll down here, you guys can see that there's a lot more uh, puts spread out across the board. A couple weeks ago, this was completely the uh, opposite for, for last month coming into the month of August. But now we can see there really isn't much interest uh, past this level here would be the 415 strike so the 415 sticks out as high positive gamma and then we have the uh, 420 level if i were to hide the gex and we take a look at this as the absolute gamma exposure levels you guys can see that the absolute gamma strike right now is the 410 and then we have the 400 level and then comes the 415 level so i would expect the markets to be within this vicinity or have a higher probability of being in this area towards the monthly OPEX versus being in this area again unless the information changes we're still in the midst of earnings season last week we had the the bigger companies reported earnings so there's still a lot more earnings to be reported but nothing of significance there's a lot more puts still relative to calls so it seems that people are still more interested in holding their puts right now and we have as long as prices within this vicinity were likely to be very choppy if we did break out and we don't see more calls being purchased or we don't see a lot of volume flying into the uh, calls so let's actually switch this out right here and we can see that still people are trading a lot of calls so this is a decent amount of uh, call volume for the month 315,000 calls were traded for the 413 strike today but if we come to the chart and we actually go to the intraday chart these levels are the gamma exposure levels for Friday expiration on my chart. So this is the 410. This is the absolute gamma strike. 400 is the highest negative gamma strike on my chart. This is Max Payne. And this is all from a script from the Quant Trading App platform. So I'm not drawing these in manually. And then we can see that the Quant Trading App algo right now is generating this level as it was expecting us to be a level of some sort of resistance for the day. And it held. Now, this is not surprising because 415 right here, as we know, this entire area is likely to be pretty choppy as there's a lot of gamma exposure in 
this level. And on top of that, this is the gamma flip level right here, and this is the absolute gamma level. So the culmination of all these things in this vicinity after the market just had this huge rally, we would expect price action to be very choppy between 415 and 408. But as we were looking at, at the uh, gamma exposure page below 408, it's not a surprising, it would not be surprising if the market was to drop to 405. And then again, bef below 405, it would be an easy shot down to 400, possibly taking a pause around this level as we have Max Payne and a, and a few other uh, key things in the area, such as points of controls, if you use the volume profile and so forth. But this video is more so focused on just gamma exposure. So we jump back now, let's actually dial it down. And now we're looking at the gamma exposure just for the monthly expiration for the SPY. And then we have, I excluded this one because the market is closed, so we don't necessarily need uh, the zero days as, as, as it's as it has expired. So we're taking a look at just the Wednesday expiration and the Friday expiration, and I'm including the monthly because as you guys can see, there's a lot of uh, gamma exposure for the monthly expiration, which makes sense. The monthlies tend to have a lot of gamma exposure. And if we take a look at this and we get a different view or different perspective on things, we can see again, that 410 level is very important. And then below it, we have a little bit of uh, gamma exposure in this vicinity here, the 407, 408, but then below it, it should be a clean shot down to uh, 400. Why this monthly level is also of significance because as we take a look at this right here, this is the uh, premium. So if we take a look at the expirations for the SPY and we take a look at this right here, we can see that the highest amount of uh, premium in the short term time frame is for the August monthlies right now. And if we scroll down, we can see that there's a lot of premium in the September monthlies, but that's pretty far away as that's 45 day sell expiration. So for just focus on trade ideas for the month of August, we want to keep eyes on the monthly and we want to include that whenever we're doing our gamma exposure analysis because that's where there's a lot of uh, open interest right now in both the uh, calls and puts there there for that strike price. So including that is pretty important. And as we isolate it just to this, we can see again, the same story. There isn't really much uh, call open interest uh, above us. Now, most of the open interest is to the downside. And as we come back to this page and actually take a look, this is the complete month of August. We can scroll up right here and we can see that for the 420 strike, it's 114,000 open interest. If we take a look at the entire uh, options chain, we can see that there's 394,000. So um, almost a third, or I mean, almost about a quarter of that is just in uh, the August expiration. But that's not necessarily, it's not like it's half of it that's in this expiration. If it was about half of it and everyone was piling into these short term calls, we would expect price to continue to go higher. And if it did get higher and we don't see call open interest increasing, we don't see more participants buying out the money calls and we would expect the markets to pull back. So running some sort of bear call spread would be a good idea. A bear call spread would be you would short the 420 call and then possibly buy something like the 425 call and expect it, you know, go 30 days till expiration or so and expect the markets to pull back and be below the strike price. The market tends to reverse around these monthly expirations. So that's why for me, I'm structuring a lot of my trades and I'm going a little further out with them. I'm, I'm targeting spreads that expire at the end of the month or targeting the uh, monthly expiration because as the market uh, rallies, let's just say we continue to rally, as we go into this monthly expiration, we'll either pull back going into the expiration or a few days after the expiration. So I want to make sure I'm giving my positions a decent amount of time. And if we do pull back to the level in which I would ideally want us to pull back to, which would be 400, things would be great based on the way in which I'm structuring my trades. But 405, which would be 450 on the SPX, which is what I mostly trade. I use the SPY usually when I'm doing most of my uh, analysis. But my instrument of choice to trade is actually the SPX. So to recap things, we point out we have a high absolute gamma at 420 at 410 sorry for for august and if we were to sort this by the absolute gex strikes we can see that the next highest gamma exposure strike is 400 so we have 410 and then we have 400 and then we have 415 so pretty choppy within this vicinity i was talking to a trader uh, earlier today as i was doing a zoom uh, with him and he mentioned something about the gamma the uh, absolute gex changing and yes it's likely to change as you know as the spot price moves However, something to take in mind that I like to check out is what's the next highest uh, gamma exposure strike price. So if we think the market is going to rally and the fact that both of the high gamma exposure strike prices for this Friday's expiration, the fact that both of them are below the current spot price right now is not necessarily something you'd want to see if you're expecting a rally. So if we take a look, we have 50 million uh, absolute gamma exposure here. The 415 strike is about 20, 23 million. In order for this 
to become the new absolute gamma strike. Obviously, the the market would have to rally closer to 415, but it's such a big. It's it's about half of the value of this one right here. So this is not necessarily a, a, a data point, or it's not necessarily something that would support the bull thesis. If you're expecting the market to rally, you'd want to see at least the 415 strike, maybe have 30 something million, 40 something million in uh, absolute gamma exposure, and we can see that again down here. So this is just another representation. Now we're looking at just the Friday expirations. We can see 420 likely to act as some sort of resistance if we did get up there however it does not mean again we can't go past it if we did go past it we can expect some sort of gamma squeeze as that's likely to happen also but do know that if we did have some sort of gamma squeeze past this level i would not expect the prices to stay above that level unless we saw the gamma starting to increase at higher strike prices out here this strike price right here which is the 405 strike is likely to act as support as we can see it's the only positive gamma strike price of significance within this sea of all these negative uh, gamma strike prices so i call this a c so think of it as a, a ton of negative gamma strike prices and then you have one positive gamma strike that's likely to act as support if the market was to pull back and it works in the uh, opposite also if we had a ton of uh, positive gamma exposure strike prices here and then let's just say we had one uh, negative gamma strike price right here if the market was to uh, rally it would likely meet some sort of resistance at that strike price as it would have to dissect that gamma exposure before it continues to go up hopefully this video helps some of you guys expose you to some uh, new information here and if we we lastly conclude with uh, any of the videos in which you might have seen early in the year in which I've done on option premium the reason this is a little bit of significance also is this imbalance right here we can see that there's a lot more call premium for the expiration for the monthly expiration relative to the put premium this number is nowhere by means as astronomical as we've seen we've seen when the market usually rally or bounced around the uh, monthly opexes so the bounce that happened here in uh, January 24th and February 24th these big rallies that happen here and here and here and here that all happened around the uh, monthly opexes we were seeing over 30 something million even as high as 40 something million in put premium and the call premium was about two or three million so that ratio was much larger but we haven't seen much of the call premium being more dominant than the put premium in a while and which again would make sense because we're in a beer we've been in a beer market but now we're seeing a little bit more of the call premium lopsided relative to the uh, put premium so the ratio here is there's over four times as much call premium as they are put premium. So just you can interpret it as the market is in a sense kind of gone too far <laughs> and it's going to struggle to go a little bit higher and going into this expiration as we should say so it's going to be if we go higher by this expiration you, it will meet some sort of resistance if we were higher than the 420 strike price after this expiration it wouldn't be surprised if we reversed it's just the way the uh, options market kind of influences the equities market and if we were to take a look at this, this is why i would expect the uh, pullback to happen right around here again give or take a few days so maybe minus three days plus three days either way not necessarily looking to be exactly perfect which is why i like to run spreads and i give them 30 days till expiration plenty of time to play out and just focus on uh, consistency here so as we jump back to the uh, monthly expirations what we're seeing right here is the combination of the premium but just for august and now we can get a little bit of a, a bigger perspective right here we can see that it's about four times a little bit over four times more uh call premium than there is put premium so that's one indication that we've probably gone a little bit too far so we have this key level 410 which would make sense why the market was so choppy here today but below that you guys want to keep it in mind as well as we look at certain points of controls where can we pull back to you guys can see we have this uh vpoc right here and we can have a lot of and we have a lot of high volume nodes so this is likely to be a choppy area which is in confluence with the 405 level but below 405 we don't have a ton of support until we get down to maybe the 400 level below 400 from a volume profile perspective we have the uh, 396 which which we can also see on the gamma exposure page which adds a little bit of confluence for this so i'm going to wrap up here guys and if you have any questions leave them in the, the comments um, leave them in the comment section down below if you learned something like the video share the video and expect to see a little bit more videos like this and and uh, thanks for watching